What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Pace Studios here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. Uh, we are joined today by a very special guest. This is Mr. Bruno Major. Hello. Hello. Which which camera am I looking at? Uh, you're looking at any camera you choose, or okay. right in my eyeballs. In your, oh, yeah, you have lots eyeballs. of options here. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Bruno, you have a new album. Uh, it is out digitally. Uh, it's yeah. called A Song for Every Moon. That is correct. And uh, it's a really special record, and we'll talk about how it came to be and how you conceived it. Uh, but you're going to do three songs from that record, and why don't we start with some music. Sure thing. So let me know, uh, what is the first song you're going to do for us from the record? Uh, I'm going to play a song called Easily, which I basically released a song each month for a whole year. So I did 12 songs Yeah, uh, in Time with a Cycle of the Moon. Easily was the song I released in November, I believe. Um, I believe. So it's funny, I I had a month to, to record and release each song. Yeah. With this one, I got halfway through November and realized that what I'd done wasn't very good. And so I had to start over again. And I had to come to New York um, like five or six days later. And so I, I did easily in one night. I would pull like an all-nighter and woke up the next morning and I really liked it. Um, but... Mm. Don't you tell me that it wasn't meant to be Call it quits Call it destiny Just because it won't come easily Doesn't mean we shouldn't try We had a good thing going lately It might not have always been a fairy tale but you know, and I know that they ain't real And I'll take the truth over the story And you might have tried my patience greatly But I'm not about to let us fail Cause I'll be the wind pick up yourselves But won't you do something for me Won't you tell me that it wasn't meant to be Call it quits, call it destiny Just because it don't come easily doesn't mean we shouldn't try Coming or going Inside out and back to front Oh, thank God and messy Cause that's how we've been And will always be And that's alright with me so don't you tell me that it wasn't meant to be Call it quits, call it destiny Just because it won't come easily It doesn't mean we shouldn't try Try, try just because it won't Doesn't mean we shouldn't try Just because it won't come easily It doesn't mean we shouldn't try For, for three people in a room, you, you make a good clap. Well, we try. <laughs> we try to sound like five. I don't know how that went. You definitely sounded like five. Like five? All right, that's good. Um, Someone was using their feet. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't me. Although, maybe it was. No one can see. Um, so I want to ask you about this record. Yeah. Uh, as you were saying, uh, you basically wrote <clears throat> one song every month for twelve months. But the conceit of it was that these were songs for every cycle of the moon. Yeah, is that right? That is correct. Um, so I, I tell me, yeah. I I I basically. What happened was, I had one song that was ready to go, and uh, it was called "Wouldn't Mean a Thing," um, and it was all written and produced, and I, I liked the sound of it, and it was. Um, I just wanted to put it out, and we, I was working on this album, and I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. I found it very intimidating. You know, the, the concept of an album is it's a a big task, and. I had this like reoccurring nightmare where I, I couldn't get out of my flat and I'd, I'd get to the, to the door and I'd realize that I didn't have my trousers on or that like my, my shoelaces were untied and I haven't got my wallet, which is really accurate and does actually happen. But in the nightmare, like it was related to the fact that I hadn't put any music out, I think. So I just thought, I'm just going to put it out and then I'm going to do it. The next month, I'm just going to make something and I'm going to put that out and I'm just going to keep going. Originally, I said to my manager, Sam, I said, uh, I'm going to do it for the rest of my life until I have run out of things to say. I'm just going to do a song every month for the rest of my life. And he, he said, that's totally unrealistic. Um, <laughs> how about we, we try a year as a compromise? So we did. Um, and I think people still thought that that was um, overly ambitious. Um, but, you know, it was an amazing thing. And it really forced me to let go in a real sense of my art without overcomplicating it. Right, because you needed each month to just make a deadline, essentially, mm -hmm. a self-imposed deadline. So tell me, like, you know, uh, it's one thing to write a song every month and put it out, but probably another to fit each of those songs into yeah. a specific context or framework yeah. as, as you have. Was that was that a, a complicating factor or a liberating factor um, in how you made these songs? First of all, I, ha I should probably add that not all of them were written in the t in the in the month themselves because I had I had a I have a catalog I still do of like four hundred songs on my laptop that I've written. Um, in like the two or three year period before I released the album. And I, the original plan was just to put those out. But then what happened was with, um, uh, you know, with Wouldn't Mean a Thing and it was, became so inspiring that I started writing in real time. Um, but that was never the intention. Um, but in, ter in terms of like, the, you know, the, the recording of it over, over the time, um, it was a lot easier because it was just like turning chapters in a book. You know, we did Wouldn't Mean a Thing and we discovered that um, I don't know if you've heard that record, but it begins with an a cappella um, four-part harmony yeah. with the opening chords. And uh, I thought, I really like that. And we used, you know, an electronic drum beat, an 808 kick, and a, you know, just like samples, basically. Um, and, I, and I liked that. So each each song was a little, it was a little development of the sound itself. Um, and that's what I love most about the album is because I think when you record an album, normally you probably go in for like whatever it is, a month, two months, and you just record everything together and it comes out as a, as a sonic uh, work that has a sonic context throughout the whole thing. This, whereas A Song for Every Moon really is like a, you know, a listening experience. It's a journey that you travel on. And by the time you get to the end with Cold Blood, um, and what's another example? Uh, yeah, Cold Blood for me is like the, the zenith of the, the sonic development throughout the album. Like I, I could never have made Cold Blood when I made Wouldn't Mean a Thing. It just wouldn't have happened. Right, it's a progression. Yeah. Much like the time that passed as you made the record. Exactly. Right? Yes. Um, cool. So uh, let's, let's do another song. And then I am still curious about sort of, you know, how the whole thing kind of fell together. But tell me about the next song you're going you're gonna to do for us from the record. Um, so I'm going to move over to the piano and do a song called Just the Same. Um, this one was cool because it was February's song, I think. And I, the way I would work is um, I'd put the, the song out, would be, be delivered like a week before the end of the month. Um, and then it would come out like right at the end of the month. And then I'd take a few days off, party and whatever, and then I'd start again. And it was on the 2nd of February. And I went into my studio and I spent all day plonking away at this piano because I write everything on the piano and um, nothing happened. And I literally, you know, by the end of the day, I was just bashing my head on the keys and I got back to the flat and it was really cold in London, rainy, and I was wearing my blue duffel coat. And uh, I walked into the door and it was really dark and I sat at the piano and the opening chords are just the same, just sort of fell out. And I wrote that whole song in like 20 minutes. Um, and then I, I recorded it on my iPhone and I went to bed, got up the next day, recorded the whole thing. And, uh, and that was that. Took the rest of the month off. <laughs> <laughs>
It's just, this is an, a, a model that we all should be aspiring to. Well, I, would, I aspire to that too. It doesn't always happen like that, mate. Yeah. <clears throat> Smash all the pictures Where I am in the frame and toy with my emotions As if it is a game And in the heat of the moment Call someone else's name I would love you just the same And drag me through the dirt Cut me to the bone Leave me for dead And then laugh your way back home And I'd still be smiling Like a madman in the rain I would love you Just the same So do your worst to me Test my loyalty I will pass With distinction of first degree Cause I lost my mind to you Somewhere down the line that you drew But I've only got myself to blame Cause I still love you just the same So flog me with malice Till the river's running red Make me an outlaw And put a price upon my head And cause me to exile Or a house for thee I would love you just the same So do your worst to me Test my loyalty I will pass with distinction of first degree Cause I lost my mind to you So I'm down the line But I've only got myself to blame Cause I still love you just the same Cause I still love you just the same Thank you, man. Thank you, dude. So, um, so tell me. So, like, by right, the way, so I was about to say bro, and then I was going to say dude, and I said, said brood. Yeah, brood or I just I had to clear that. All right. Well, there's a brood here. I do that all the time. I generally I brood. All. Actually, it's like my natural state. <laughs> it's just indecision. That's ultimately what it is. Brooding. It's no, not not being able to decide what word you want to use, oh, yeah, and then well, just right. making a, a bad combination of the both of them, and it, and it feels really bad. That's, you know, that's how language works, man. That's how new words get made. Yeah, man. You know, see, it's, uh, you know. I don't, think I, don't, I don't think I'm that cool. I don't think I can formulate words at this point in time. If you just keep saying booed, I'm booed. telling you, it'll happen. <laughs> all right. Just, all keep, right just keep saying it. Next record will be called <laughs> booed. You better ask me the next question. Cool. Yeah, all right. All right, cool. Um, so, all right. So, the, the, the record is a song for every moon. Um, mm. Tell me exactly, you know, how that factored in. So, you're sitting down to write... Yeah, you have a whole month. You have only a day. Uh, yeah. You know what is in your mind as you are sitting down? Is it like, are they natural? The songs sort of coming to you naturally in that mm. framework, or are you thinking like, I've got to write a song about 
Aquarius, you know, or like, you know, how, how does it, how does it kind of come out? I don't you? know. There is no, um, there is no pattern at all. It happens very differently. Um, a lot of the time for me, it's sparked off by something that somebody says. There's like an, a moment of inception, whether it's I'm reading a poem and it'll be just a word or, um, you know, somebody will let's say a phrase in a certain way um, or you're reading a book or it can be anywhere. It can just be something that you hear on the tube or an, even an advert that you see on the wall. Um, but it'll normally spark off an idea. And like that's how a lyrical song begins for me. The musical side of things, um, normally it's just I, I plonk away yeah. and like a certain plonk will appeal to me and I'll follow it. And, and either, either way, whether it's a word thing or whether it's a musical thing, a pathway appears out of the ether and you just have to follow it. So then how does the, the concept of this renewal each month you know the the, mm. the orbiting that happens each month, the mm -hmm. the cycles of the moon. Yeah. Um, how does that factor into how you create these songs, or is it really just kind of like a that is the you're keeping the same schedule as the universe, basically? Yeah, I I firmly believe in that the universe and it does it works in mad geometric patterns, whether it's um, electrons orbiting around the nucleus of a of a of an atom or whether it's um the moon orbiting our planet whether it's our planet orbiting the sun or whether it's the sun orbiting around the galaxy or like around the giant black hole wherever it is like even to the to the point where there's this thing called the great attractor that we don't know about where billions of galaxies are heading towards including our own and the, it all works in these amazing patterns and I, I do feel like we are just ultimately the universe um we're just the sentient part of the universe. And it's important for us to be in keeping with it. And I don't think there's any um, coincidence that, you know, our entire calendar schedule is organized according to the planets. That's just the way that we are, the way that we, we get up and our melatonin sends us to sleep when the sun goes down. And, right. You know. It's how we situate ourselves. Yes. Right. So it's, it's really the concept here is it's more about being in a kind of synchronicity with the the order of the universe rather than kind of like sitting down in August and writing a song about, you know, the maybe, moon in August. Yeah. Maybe it was a vain attempt to, uh, to bring meaning to an ultimately meaningless release <laughs> schedule. But I, 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 I do believe what I said about the universe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, look, we're all just, we're all just boods here. We're all just you know? boods. <laughs> um, so uh, you're going to do one more uh, from A yeah. Song for Every Moon. Tell me what yeah. that song is going to be. Well, I'm actually a little confused about what the song is going to be. Um, I, I have two options. I could I could play it safe, or I could play one that might go horribly wrong. What would the uh, What would the universe dictate you do? I don't know. I don't know. There's I so like much. There's so much order in the chaos, and vice versa. How are we gonna How are we gonna decide? I think I'm gonna jump. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leap. I'm gonna see what happens. Um, although I have spoken about wouldn't mean a thing a lot. Maybe I should play that one. No, let's just play. Let's just do it. Come on. Be brave. Wouldn't mean a thing would be kind of an ironic choice after all of the <laughs> deliberation that went into that. You know, I, I don't know who it was, but some, some blog post that reviewed that song quite brilliantly said, started off the article with, um, but it would mean something, wouldn't it? You know, <laughs> the lyrics are like, I could travel back in time and hear Al Green sing, but it wouldn't mean a thing without you. Like, but it would, it would be really great to see Al Green. I mean, Al Green is still singing, but you know, back in the, wherever, the 70s or whatever. <laughs> There's no life without love, they say None worth having anyway You're a mystery to me some days That's what keeps me sane A heart that yearns is always young But you can't love just anyone it's been a while since 21. Just realized I haven't turned the amp on, have I? I think so. Just realized, why is the guitar so quiet? There we go. Apologies, everybody. Rule one of being a guitar player.
There's no life without love, they say. None worth having anyway. You're a mystery to me some days. That's what keeps me sane. A heart that yearns is always young. But you can't love just anyone. It's been a while since 21. But I still feel the same. So take me home and don't spare the horses. Wait to a silence I need. Take me home and don't spare the horses. Wait to a gossamer breeze. I don't need to build a house of stone. Wherever you are, where I call home, is where just you and me can drink and laugh and dance till three. 'Cause I have everything I need when I'm with you alone. And home is where we stay all night. No roof above our starry sky. I'd lie here till the day I die, and our time together's flown. So take me home and don't spare the horses. Wait to a silence I need. Take me home and don't spare the horses. Wait to a gossamer breeze. I don't need to build a house of stone. Wherever you are, where I call home. And I know we made mistakes at times. Every now and then, I made you cry. For that, I am sorry. They were few and far between. We're closer now than we've ever been, and you know I am sorry. 'Cause I used to wonder why I'm here. No rhyme, no reason would appear. But since we've met, it's loud and clear. I'm here to see you home. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, man. You know what? I got. <laughs> I I played it really good, but I just didn't turn the amp on. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You know, the universe has ways of uh, telling you things. Yes, exactly. Turn the amp on mm -hmm. is uh, the general message, I guess, of the whole, the whole shebang. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is Bruno Major. Uh, these songs that we have heard today, they're all from a new record called A Song for Every Moon. The album is out digitally. You can, you can uh, download it now. I think the physical release is still uh, a couple weeks away. Yeah? I believe uh, 17th of November out on CD and vinyl. CD and vinyl. Order that from brunomajor.com. Yes, and uh, tour dates there as well. Uh, Bruno has a show tonight uh, in Brooklyn at Elsewhere, new place in Bushwick. Yes. And then I think uh, a stop across the country in LA, is that right? Yeah, that's right. We're doing uh, uh, Echoplex in Echoplex. Los Angeles. Yeah, nice. Um, and uh, anyway, go to the website for more dates, more information, uh, so you can get the record. And, uh, you know, go see this, go see this guy play, man. Um, so Bruno Major, thank you so much for oh, coming to thank Paste you for and me. Playing, us, playing us your songs in the studio today and uh, come back and play us 12 more next year. Yeah? Oh, I would love to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 